Hello! In this video I'm going to be talking to you about your course settings on Canvas. So first you'll need to log into Canvas. I'm here on my dashboard and I'm going to show you this in my sandbox. I'm going to go ahead and click on the course that I want to manipulate the, the course settings for. First I'm going to go to the course navigation menu to find settings. I'll go ahead and click settings at the bottom of the course navigation menu. You'll notice that there are five tabs at the top. Course details, sections, navigation, apps, and feature options. We're not going to mess with feature options because those are set at the university level. We're not going to talk about apps today because I'll talk about that in another video. I've also discussed navigation in another video. Sections, I would really recommend you reach out to IT or LMS admin in order to separate or combine sections of your courses as it's a bit of a tricky process. Today I'm going to be focusing on course details. First, you can change the image that appears on your dashboard right here in image by clicking these three dots. You can choose an image either from an online database or from your computer. You won't be able to change the name of the course. That's also set at the university level. You can change the time zone of your course. I would recommend you keep the time zone in the same time zone as your students or sometimes due dates make it confusing for your students. Next, you'll want to make sure that it's a course that you're participating in. You can start here by setting the start date, or you may set the end date for your course. Notice that there are some options underneath the start and end date. You can restrict students from viewing the course before the course start date, even if your course is published. This way, students won't be able to participate in any of the activities until after the start date has passed. Next, you can restrict students from viewing the course after the end date. That means they won't have access to materials, exams, or quizzes after the end of the course. We'll go ahead and check both of these. Next, you can set the language. For some of my foreign language courses, else I may set this language to French or Spanish. That way, the entire course is in that language, including all of these buttons on the left-hand side. This is really great for language immersion for students. Next, you'll notice that you, there's a file storage limit, which is set at the university level. Then, you can say that there's a speed grader filtered by student groups if you have multiple sections. Next, you have your grading scheme. You may enable a course grading scheme. This is nice if you ever want to uh, give students grades based on an A through F level. So, if I want to enable this, I can click a check mark, which will give me a set grading scheme option. I can open that and I can make sure that my A through F settings are how I want them to be. If I want to add an A plus option, for example, I can click on the pencil here and edit it. I can insert above or below by highlighting in between the different letter grades. At the top, I'm going to go ahead and insert an A plus grade. Now I might want that to start at 97%. And once I'm finished, I'll click save. This way, if you ever set grades through a letter grade in any of your assignments, it will follow this course grading scheme. Next, I would recommend you keep your license private. If you're creating a course that you want to share, then you can also give it some Creative Commons licenses or share it to the public domain. For most courses, you'll be keeping this as private. Next, you can see the copyright license information as well and the course visibility. Here, you can either make it public so everyone who's using Canvas can access it for the institution so only Cal State Fullerton can access it or a course where you're going to restrict who accesses it. Most of the time you're going to be having it set as a course level visibility. You can also customize it and save the syllabus so that other people may view the syllabus page of your course. We're going to go ahead and keep this unchecked so that your co this course is only available to the students enrolled and the teacher or instructor assigned. Next, you can also include the course in a public course index. Finally, you'll get to choose your format, on campus, online, or blended, depending on how you're going to be doing your course. You may set a description if you like, um, but only you will be able to see this. And if you make your course public, other people who see it on Canvas will get to see the description. The very last thing is this more options. This is an area that I think is highly important, although it is hidden. We'll go ahead and click open for more options. Something that I really like to set is to show recent announcements on the course homepage. Typically, this is set unchecked 
and we're going to want to check it to say that we can leave maybe one or two recent announcements at the top of your home page. This is really important because students don't always view your announcements or receive notifications for them in their email or inboxes. This is because students get to set their own course navigation and course notification settings on Canvas. So here we'll go ahead and set the number of announcements. That way, every time they enter the course, if they didn't get a notification for an announcement, it'll be at the very top. Next, you can let students attach files to a discussion, but this isn't necessary because they can use the rich text editor to embed any files or videos. Sometimes if this is checked, it will confuse students and they will attempt to upload video files as attachments, which isn't allowed and will give them an error message. I'm gonna leave this unchecked. Next, you can let students create discussion topics. This may be useful for your course if you like students to set up different um, discussion board areas. However, if you'd like to control the topics, prompts, and where students participate, you may want to leave this unchecked. Next is let students edit or delete their own discussion posts. This is really nice because if a student makes a mistake or has a link that needs to be corrected, they can go back and fix it themselves. Next, you can check or uncheck if students can organize their own groups and sign up for their own groups. That's up to you as well. Finally, you can hide totals in student grade summary or hide the grade distribution graphs from students. Typically, this will be unchecked when you first start your course, so you'll need to decide if you want to check or uncheck these. Finally, you can also hide sections on the people page for students so that they may only see the people in their own section. And finally, you might want to disable comments on announcements. I find it a bit overwhelming when students can contact me in 50 different ways. I like to make sure that they contact me through the inbox on Canvas or through email. So I'm going to disable comments here. Next, you want to make sure that only teachers is clicked for create, rename, and edit course pages. If not, if you allow students to do this or anyone to do this, they may change important information within your course. Once you've selected all your course settings, you'll go ahead and click update course details. And there you go. You've set your course settings for your course. Have a wonderful day.